Good evening everybody. I will explain you today about the mesh restoration in optical networks. Mesh restoration is defined by ITUT as a ASON, automatically switched optical networks. And uh, there is another name for it in the industry which is called as WSON. What are the topics we will cover in these slides? Type of services which are defined in the ASON and what are the architectures in ASON like uh, in layer 0, layer 1 and uh, what are the typical deployment scenarios for them? What are the architectures of implementation? Like in layer 0 we can follow single transponder approach, dual transponder approach and layer 1 which is based on three transponder approach. In service types we have got platinum service which is uh, 1 plus 1 plus R. It is uh, called always available service. It is available till the time resources are available and availability is generally very high. And this service is very useful where a lot of fiber cuts are there. Gold is a bit lower standard service and then is a silver. Silver is a standard MSP or SNCP service which is 1 plus 1. If one cut happens it will switch to in 50 millisecond after second cut service will be down. While copper and iron are the flavors of the unprotected services. In copper after first cut and standby service can be created if the resources are available through the GNPLS or restoration. So <clears throat> the places like in India where we have a lot of fiber cuts, 90% of services are present as platinum because we have a lot of chances of dual cuts in the networks and generally the routes of uh, circuits are longer because of the geography of country. So let us discuss about the layer zero restoration. Um, this is also called uh, WSON, Variable and Switched Optical Networks. And uh, there are two approaches to build it. First approach is based on uh, if we deploy two transponders. In two transponder case, again, there are two approaches. We could use a architecture based on the transponders. So in this architecture, there is no need for any cross connect capable box, just Y cable will be sufficient to split the signal from client to the both TRPs. While in cross connect approach we need to have a heavier box which should have a central cross connect and any client could be mapped to the any line cards. So <clears throat> how this works? Um, let's move to the next means in a much better way. So this is the physical uh, network for east to west for two sides drawing. Here what we have got we have got client and then uh, Cross connect if it's a cross net based box. I have used cross net based box. Generally, it's a you know more reliable than a splitter, but we could definitely use a splitter also, which is a bit cheaper architecture. <clears throat> then we could use uh, two transponders, one on the work side, one on the protect side. These are similar transponders, just name sake. And then these are the two WSS which I have deployed called the Rodums for the drop side. It's a directionless drop. And then these are the three line side WSS, similar architecture on the west side. Now, I present the first service as a work path on a lambda. Let this be a green color lambda. Um, then second protect path could be in any other color. It's a red color. And uh, what happens? What happens on the first fiber cut? Since this is a ODU SNC between these two work and protect so switching will happen within 50 millisecond so naturally this path disappears and this path becomes a work path in 50 millisecond and in the meantime when this transponder has gone free which was earlier used for the work path will be used by GM PLS to build up the third path in the network which will be called a protect path and interesting thing is if already the green color which was earlier edited by this transponder is already used in this part of the network then being a colorless architecture this transponder can tune to a different color and a new path will be new color will be available in a third path now if the second cut happens suppose this path also goes this path will be available for switching in 50 millisecond for recovering the traffic. But remember, there is a <coughs> certain amount of time to build up this 
optical path typically it goes to 2 minutes for uh, metro networks and it could be longer or shorter depending upon the size and the topology of networks so in case this fiber cut happens both the fiber cuts happen these two fiber cuts happen within the same time frame then service will not be available for switching in 50 millisecond it will definitely drop similar architecture and second approach for WSON is with a single transponder it's a one transponder approach here client connects directly to one transponder splitter is deployed after transponder and same lambda is fed to different boxes so remember this is a single color which would be going to the two different directions and uh, how the switching happens in case of first cast failure is sensed by splitter and <clears throat> it switches between the work and protect path and then the sensitivity of switching will depend upon the how better is your splitter does it split just on the los or it does it have some intelligence to switch on the signal degrade or uh, uh, you know threshold also so this approach is uh, having its own pros and cons definitely it is an economical option because transport to count is reduced to half and in the meantime this also limits us our services how many can be provisioned it will depend upon the number of channels once we have per channel <coughs> So here we see this is a transponder splitter being a single color the same color is available on both the paths first cut this path goes unavailable and this path becomes a work path in 50 millisecond and now this port is available for switching or building a new route so we are going to build a new route from the third uh, protect path so this is again the same color so we'll have to keep one color free for whole network or in one particular geography of network or we need to be a very careful that this service can switch to these and these routes so it's a bit uh, you know uh, service where we need to have our own control on the resources then comes the layer one restoration um, this is uh, quite widely deployed in the long haul networks because here optical path is always kept ready with all the three transponders transponders are already having optical closed routes hence no dependency on optical layer switching happens at the electrical level any ODU or the VC4 circuits switch within the wavelengths which are already present so how it happens this is a client this is the ODU cross connect and then three transponders are there and all these three transponders have built up there on physical paths on the redundant on the available different paths so that there is a no common point of failure so what happens when there is a failure in any of the paths suppose this path fails then internally this switch will route the vc force coming out of this client to the other available optical path and there is no uh, you know touch on the optical path so this switching happens always in 50 millisecond until the resources are available or vc4s or odu 